Hi everyone and welcome back to Geek's Bathhouse. It's been a little while. As you can see, I'm recording in a new location. I have moved to a new city, been really busy getting everything unpacked and starting a new job. Now I'm really excited to get back into some soap making. So today we're going to be making a BB-8 and Poe Dameron inspired cold process soap. But we're going to start out with the embeds going on top and those are going to be melt and pour. So I wanted to show you that process too. Let's get started. As you've seen me do in previous videos, I'm going to use my embed mold and what I'm going to do to kind of estimate how much melt and pour to use is I'm going to measure out some water in each mold. Now for our soap, we're probably only going to need about four X-wings, but I'm going to go ahead and make all six just in case I mess things up. Always give yourself a little bit of extra wiggle room. So that gives us almost exactly two ounces. And usually when I do this, I go ahead and measure out just a little bit extra melt and pour from what the water was because I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. As you can see, I've already got my melt and pour all cubed and ready to go. I'm going to be using clear melt and pour for this because I want to make the X wings black, like Poe's X wing and I think that using the clear melt and pour will make it a lot easier to get a black color than trying to get a white base to turn black because you'd have gray and you'd have to use a lot more colorant. So I'm just going to zero out my scale and measure out my cubes. We're going for just over two ounces here. We're at 2.05. One, toss in one more cube just for good measure. 2.19. That ought to do it. So now I'm going to pop this in the microwave and I will be right back and we'll get started coloring. Alright, so we're back and all melted down. For my black colorant today, I'm going to be using black pearl mica powder from Nurture Soap. I also have some activated charcoal here. I'm not sure if that was focusing. I also have some activated charcoal here just in case the black pearl doesn't give me as dark a color as I want, but I wanted to use this black pearl makeup. I've never used this black pearl makeup before, and I want to try it out. I also have some snowflake sparkle, also from Nurture Soap, that I may add in just to give it a little bit more shimmer, kind of a metallic, going look for like a metallic look since it's a X-wing. Ooh, I really like the way that looks. The black Pearl Mica actually has quite a bit of shimmer already. We may not need to add any of the snowflake at all. That's looking pretty good. So if you can see, I don't know if you can really pick up the shimmer down in there or not. But it is really nice. It's looking a little bit gray though to me, I think. So I may toss in just a touch of activated charcoal just to try to deepen that color just a little bit. Not much. A little goes a long way and we don't have a lot of soap here. We'll stir that in. See what we think. I don't know, still looking a little gray. I really want like a nice solid black. I think the shimmer is kind of throwing me off. It's hard to tell. The shimmer is almost making it look a little bit gray. Let's add just a touch more activated charcoal. This is one of the kind of fun things about soaping is just tweaking your colors, mixing and matching colors until you get exactly what you want. I really enjoy it. We'll stir this in and that should hopefully get us where we're looking to be here. Then my plan is, after these solidify, to go back in with some of this orange mango tango mica, also from Nurture, and paint on the orange stripe and the orange tops of the X-Wings. Now this mold is actually from the original Star Wars, so the X-Wing fighter that I have is not exactly identical to Pose, but it's going to be close enough. 
So I think we're ready to pour. We'll just pour off all of our little X-Wing fighters here. Carefully. It's so easy to accidentally over pour these. Get excited about what you're doing and just overdo it. So I try to remember to go slow. You can always come back and add a little bit more as you need to. There we go. Ah! Missed the mold on that one just a little bit. Four. Five. And hopefully we have enough to do all six. I think we should. It's gonna be close. It's already kind of solidifying on the side of the jar here. Not quite. So what I'm gonna do is pop this back in the microwave for just a couple seconds and get the rest of that out and into our last mold. Okay, perfect. Our last little bit is liquefied and we'll just add it right in there to our last X-Wing. Perfect. He may be just a little bit short still, but that is quite all right. I also have some rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. I'm gonna spray on there if I can open it just to kill off any bubbles that we may have. It's kind of cold in here, so it's actually solidifying, setting up pretty quickly. So I will bring you guys back when these are all set up and I am ready to paint the stripes on. All right, guys, we are back and ready to unmold our X-Wings. I went ahead and unmolded one just to see how it came out. I'll get you in for a close-up shot in just a minute because I want you guys to be able to see the detail on these things. They're really cool. As you can see, they pop out super easy from the silicone molds. Just kind of got to stretch and pull it from each direction. And then they should just pop right on out. I did not stick these in the fridge or the freezer or anything. I just left them sitting out for a couple of hours and they hardened right up. So we're just going to get all these out, get our mica paint going, and get these X-Wings looking like Poe Dameron's. So what we're going to do is I have some 91% rubbing alcohol here. Just going to get that down in there using some Mango Tango Mica from Nurture Soap. It's a really pretty orange. No shimmery. I'm just going to mix that in until I get the right con paint consistency that I want here. And this takes a little bit of just trial and error mixing until you get it the way that you want and the way that's going to look good. I'm going to need it to be a little bit thick so that I don't have my black showing through underneath my mica paint. So I'm just going to mix some, try it, maybe add a little more, maybe not. We're just going to see how it goes. That's why we have six when we only need four. So first I filled in the little top area here. Now I'm going to go in, and that took like two coats kind of. Now I'm going to go in and just put the stripe down the side. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And it may take a couple of coats because that black underneath is a really dark color. We're trying to put a lighter color on top. Mica painting is not an exact science, guys. There we go. And then I'm going to do just a couple little dots on the top of each wing here because Poe's ship has orange on the top of his wings. Like I said, this isn't exactly like his, but it's still pretty darn cool. So I'm going to let that sit, move on to the next ones, and then come back and kind of go over those colors. So we're just going to keep on moving here. I think I might add just a touch more mica to my paint mixture here. The rubbing alcohol is great with the paint. I've also seen people use vodka, actually, 
Um, anything that's going to evaporate quickly works great for mica painting. So I'm just going to keep going on these guys and I'll bring you back when I'm all done. Okay guys, just wanted to bring you in for one last look. I've finished, pretty much finished. I may go back in and touch up a little bit, but got my little paint job done on all of them. I think they're pretty cool. Now I know they're not exact, so Star Wars aficionados don't hate me. But they still definitely give you the idea. And you see that and you definitely think Poe Dameron, right? Alrighty, so we will be back when I have prepped everything to do the loaf and put this all together. So I have got in front of me my liquid oils with some powders down in there. There is kale and clay, goat milk powder, and colloidal oatmeal in there. I have my hard oils over here. I have my lye in this glass container here, which I will mix into my water. In my water, I also have some Tussa silk and some sodium lactate, which is basically a salt that adds hardness to the bar and makes it a little bit easier to get out of the mold. I also have my mold ready, my fragrance ready. Today I'm using a fragrance called Black Sea from Candle Science. Mm, it smells really good. It's a manly sort of musky scent. I'll, I'll try to remember to put a link to the fragrance in the description in and the fragrance description in the description box below. I also have some water here to clean off my stick blender. I have my colors and we are all set to go. So first thing I'm gonna do is just mix in these powders a little bit into my liquid oils. Get that going. This is kind of free mixing because the lye is not in here yet. So if I can get everything blended ahead of time, that helps. So that's all blended up and those are ready to go. Now the last time I used this recipe, it moved pretty quickly on me, um, set up pretty quickly. So today, that time I used um, a water discount. Today I'm gonna be doing full water. That way, hopefully I have a little bit more time. Although I do wanna do a little bit of piping on the top of this soap, so hopefully it doesn't take too long to set up. So I'm going to be doing my favorite method of cold process soap, which is the heat transfer method. I've just added my lye to my water, and I'm mixing it up now until it's all dissolved. And as soon as it's all dissolved and looking pretty clear, which it is, I'm going to pour it over my hard oils and use the heat from the lye water to melt my hard oils. Then I will add in my cold oils. I say cold, they're room temperature, not actually cold. These aren't cold either, they're just solid oils. I that, guess that's a better word for it. So we're gonna mix this together and just stir, stir, stir until almost all of it is melted. Then I may use the stick blender just to help it along the last little bit. I have never soaked with this fragrance before, so Hopefully it is kind to us and doesn't accelerate or do anything crazy. It had great reviews, so we'll see. I'm thinking for this soap, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a white, our mango tango orange, and my favorite silver graphite from Micahs and More. Just a touch of the silver and the orange mixed into a mainly beige-ish colored soap. I do have some titanium dioxide standing by if we need to whiten it up a little bit because the fragrance is kind of yellow. Let's go ahead and get the rest of these oils blended in and then get our liquid oils mixed in and get going. Now I'm gonna pour my liquid oils with my additives, trying to pour them kind of down the stick to reduce the amount of air bubbles I'm introducing to the soap. Get this all scraped in and we'll get everything blended together. 
I have to give a shout out to my boyfriend for this soap because he helped a lot with the idea process. I was thinking about what kind of soap to do and I have a list of like 30 something projects that I want to do on the channel and he saw one that involved the X-Wings and he, and he was the one that suggested, oh hey, you should do Poe Dameron's X-Wing. And so that's what we're doing. Um, so the plan is, hang on, let me get this blended up and then I'll tell you. All right, so the plan is to do a swirl with the white, the orange, and the gray, and then we will pipe just a little bit on top in the gray and place our X-wings into the gray so it's kind of like smoke where the X-wing is lifted off and the um, soap itself is colored in the theme of both Poe Dameron's uniform and BB-8 with the orange and beige and just a touch of the gray. So we're gonna go orange, a lot of beige, a little bit of orange, a little bit of gray is what I'm thinking. We're gonna have to have a little more of the gray for the piping and go mostly beige, maybe a touch more on the orange. Now, oh, I should have added my fragrance before. I was gonna add it before I divided my colors, but I forgot. So we'll add it right now. It's okay. The fragrance is awfully yellow, so I do think I may need to add just a bit of titanium dioxide to our beige, because it's not really beige, it's kind of yellow. Stir that in. There it is. It's like, I know I have one more of these somewhere. There we go. All right, so let me grab that titanium dioxide and I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. I had to get a little bit of titanium dioxide for our white. So we'll go ahead and add some of that in here. Hold off, I won't add it all just yet. We're gonna do orange up front. I am really liking this Mango Tango orange. This is the first time I've bought colors from Nurture Soap, and so far, I am loving them. I've got a couple different colors to try from them. And this silver graphite, which I feel like I have used this in every project you guys have seen so far. For some reason, this is just a go-to color for me. I really like it. We'll get started with that and see where we are. I'm going to start by just hand stirring it in and then we'll hit everything with the stick blender in just a minute. I don't want a white white, I want kind of a creamy beigey white because um, Bo Dameron's jacket is, um, you know, kind of a dirty beige. It's worn, it's used, it's not pristine. So that's kind of the look that I'm going for in the color of the soap as well. Man, I am loving this orange. It is super bright and amazing looking. And now let's get the silver. Silverish gray. Hopefully we don't have to wait too terribly long on the piping I went from a 2 to 1 ratio lie to water, or water to lie, all the way to full water. So that is a difference of almost 12%, um, a 2 to 1 ratio in the, the recipe of this size is about 26%, and full water is 38%. Oh yeah, these colors are looking great. I am just going to hit them all with a stick blender real quick. All right, so we are all rearranged and ready to pour. I'm not going to pour this in any sort of plan. I'm just going to pour, and then I think I'm going to go back in with one of my popsicle sticks and just swirl it all around. 
kind of like a chapstick swirl, swirl, but I don't have any chapsticks. So we'll do a popsicle stick swirl. That'll work. I asked Nick when he came up with the idea for the soap what kind of swirl I should do, and he said, I don't know, that's all up to you. I'm just the idea guy. You're the creative one. So. I like drop swirls, and I like in the pot swirls a lot too. I like things that get really swirly. <clears throat> I think this is staying nice and fluid. I don't think I necessarily needed to go full water, but I did not want this to seize up on me, and the last time it really did. So we're going to use all of the white and all of the orange and reserve some of the gray for some piping on top. Sorry, I'm kind of getting my bowls in the way there. Alright, I'm going to save the rest of the gray. Set that aside. Go ahead and go in with one of my chopsticks and we'll just go bloop, 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 bloop. There we go. That ought to do her. Now, let's see. Let's do white, then orange. I'm just going to put the rest of this on top. Not in any particular pattern. We'll swirl it all around. And then we'll wait for the gray to harden up so that we can pipe it on and stick our X-wings on top. And judging by how thin this still is, it may be a little while. <laughs> Thin soaps are perfect when you want to do complicated swirls, but when you're waiting on piping to set up, boy, that can be a pain. All right. That looks good. I may try to see if I can scrape just a smidge more white onto the top there, just for the sake of swirling the colors around. All right. Pop that down a little bit. Just use the back of my paintbrush from earlier. And I'm just going to go in and kind of swirl that around. Beautiful. Looks good. All right. So there we have it. For now, we're going to wait. Get a, I've got my piping bag ready to go. I'm going to be piping with a Wilton 12. It's just an open circle tip, and I'm just going to do a little bit of piping to try to make some gray smoke-like stuff on top. And I'll bring you back. You can watch all that. I'm just going to get cleaned up a little bit and give this gray soap some time to set up. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back for the very last step. It has taken... A good 45 minutes or so for this piping to get thick enough and it's it's still a little thinner than I would like. I don't need to get my safety glasses on. Safety first. Um, it's still a little thinner than I would like but we are gonna go with it at this point. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna get this into loaded into my piping bag and we will get started and get this soap out of the way for a minute. Get where I can work. Everything's too far away from me. All right. Hopefully, I've saved a good amount and not too much. I totally just eyeball. I don't actually like calculate and measure what's going to be for piping and what's going to be for the soap and what's going to be for each color. Some people actually will even 
go so far as to weigh out each individual color to get their proportions the way they want. I am more of a wing it style. Soper. And both ways are just fine. It is okay. Do what suits you best. All right. So, I'm just gonna get all this, get my popsicle stick here and scooch this all down and get it ready to go. There we go. All right. Here we go. Get our soap in here. I'm gonna try to do this where you can see what I'm doing. I don't really have a plan. I'm thinking of just kinda trying to do a little bit of a swirly. No real rhyme or reason to it, just kind of a swirl, because the idea is for it to just be kind of like smoke on top. So that's why I was thinking swirl it around a little bit, and I don't want it to be too high either. So that's kind of what I'm going for. And now we're going to put in our X wings. I don't want them too close to the edge because I do kind of like to cut off a little bit of the edge. <clears throat> but with this loaf, it's about, I think it's a four inch loaf. One, two, three, yeah. So in order to get four bars, <clears throat> we're going to have to go pretty close. So the first one I'm going to turn and face toward me so that when I cut it, it the X-wing itself is pointed toward the prettier side of the soap. Now I can put the next one in facing the other way. Try, I need to turn it a little bit so I can kind of get gauge my width. A lot of people put marks on the side of their soap which I think is really smart so that you can know about where you cut. I am again eyeballing it because that's just how I roll. And this last one will also face this way. I'm trying to get them more vertical than angled. That's how Nick said they would look best. So there we go. Our X-Wings are placed in their little smoky clouds, and I'm going to let this soap sit overnight. I will probably spray it, actually I will spray it, with some of my rubbing alcohol. I like to do that. It helps prevent soda ash. So I'll do that, put this guy to sleep, and hopefully it'll be ready to unmold tomorrow so that I can cut it and get this video up for you guys by the weekend when the movie comes out. Um, but if it's not ready, it may be a day or two after that because I don't want to mess this one up. So I am going to give it all the time it needs in the mold so that it comes out nice and pretty. So I will be back to cut. All right, guys, we are back the next day. And we are getting ready to cut our Poe Dameron and BB-8 inspired soap. I just popped it out of the mold. It came out pretty cleanly. There was a little bit of sticking, but I was impatient, so I actually popped it into the freezer for about an hour just to get it to come on out because I can't wait any longer and I want to see what's inside. Now, I don't have a fancy soap cutter, but that's okay. I have this handy dandy little wire cheese cutter that I'm going to use, and it actually works pretty great. So if a soap cutter is not something you're able to afford yet. Get you one of these. This was like nine bucks on Amazon and it definitely gets the job done. These bars, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it with where the embeds are on the top. The only trick with the cheese slicer is I don't have a guide to kinda hold the soap in place so I do have to be really careful about making sure I hold the soap right where it's supposed to be. Alright, let's see. Oh wow, there's the swirl up close. 
came out super swirly and awesome. I love it. Let's cut the next one. A little paper towel here. Clean the wire between cuts. That helps set this guy out of the way here. And do the next one. So my plan, if I'm going to be using this cheese cutter for a while, is actually to just build onto it and add a little stop where I can kind of butt the soap up against it and keep it steady. But this definitely gets me pretty clean cuts. There we go. And there's the other side. Oh, I am loving this soap, you guys. It is so awesome. It came out really well. Better than I had envisioned. My boyfriend Nick was actually really excited about this too because this was, like I told you yesterday, it was really his idea for the soap. Last one. Got it. And there we go. Look how awesome they came out. I will definitely get you guys in for some close-up shots. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, I apologize about the delay, but I am super excited to be getting back into it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and hit that like button. Give me the thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't, and share with your friends if you think they'd be interested in what we're doing. We've got some great projects coming up. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.